Hello, everyone. This is the fourth recording for Early Stoic Philosophy, a class on Stoic logic, physics, and ethics. And today I want to talk about knowledge. In particular, I want to talk about an innovation that Zeno, the founder of Stoic Philosophy, introduces. Zeno coins the notion of catalepsis. Literally translated, catalepsis means grasping or capturing. And we already talked a little bit about catalepsis when we talked about cataleptic impressions. Cataleptic impressions reveal how things are and they reveal to the cognizer that this is what they are doing. And this whole kind of package of introducing a mental state, an epistemic state, as we might say, which is not part of the epistemology prior to Zeno, and introducing this model of there is a kind of impression, and if you ascend to it, then you have this mental state, catalepsis. That is a very important component of the new ideas that Zeno brings to philosophy. At the same time, Zeno is not, as it were, completely moving away from basic ideas in earlier. Greek epistemology, and in particular, Plato is a very important figure for the Stoics. The Stoic Zeno spends more than 20 years in Plato's academy, and it is safe to assume that a lot of his thinking is developed in the kind of discussion of Platonic dialogues that we might have in a seminar where you kind of reconstruct a theory in Plato and you say, you know, here I disagree, or here I think he has an interesting idea, but I would develop it somehow differently. So we can imagine that type of discussion. And from those discussions, Zeno seems to take away some dimensions of Plato's philosophy as interesting and worth developing further. And at the same time, he completely dismisses some other dimensions of Plato's philosophy and he introduces new ideas. So one thing that he is holding on to is an important distinction between opinion in Greek Gaza and knowledge in Greek episteme, where a kind of basic intuition is that episteme, the kind of knowledge that episteme is, is a high-level achievement. It is a kind of very worthy thing, a valuable thing. Whereas Gaza, Opinion is a kind of ordinary, everyday thing. We all kind of seem stuck in the domain of having lots of opinions. So that kind of intuition, Zeno appropriates and rethinks and combines with his innovative idea about catalepsis, grasping or capturing. And that has been much discussed in the scholarship and I want to kind of analyze it or present it as, as a view that makes sense of two really different intuitions. Intuitions which may seem to pull in different directions. One of them we can describe as egalitarian, if it is plausible to use that political notion in the context of epistemology. So this egalitarian idea would be that you know, don't we somehow all have some, at least, successful epistemic states? Doesn't it seem that we have at least a kind of ordinary knowledge? Something like, suppose you sit at your desk and you, let's say, read the fragments, some fragments in the long and settling edition that we are using for this class and next to the book, is your cup of tea and you look at the cup of tea and you think this is a cup of tea. Now, it would seem to us that one doesn't have to be a wise person or an expert or, or anything in order to have that kind of thought and thereby, and if you accept it, endorse it, assent to it in the terms of the Stoics, thereby somehow capture something about how the world is. And the Stoics seem to seem to be on board with this modern intuition that 
all of us have at least this kind of ordinary knowledge. So that would seem to be the kind of quasi-egalitarian idea. And that idea, I want to suggest, is very important to Stoic philosophy. They think that these instances of grasping anchor our access to the world. We all have them. One doesn't have to be an expert. One doesn't need knowledge in order to have them. And they are a kind of, they are an achievement, but they are an ordinary achievement. At the same time, however, the Stoics do hold on to the idea that episteme is a rare thing, a very rare thing indeed. They say that the wise person or the person with knowledge is as rare as a phoenix, which means it kind of practically doesn't exist. So they are writing from a perspective of someone who does not take themselves to be wise or knowledgeable. The assumption is we are all of us, in a sense, fools, as they put this. We are not wise, not having knowledge. And that means that we are stuck with Doxa with opinion. So we're now kind of really tricky and contested dimension of catalepsis, of grasping how the world is, is that it takes different forms in the wise person and the non-wise person. Whenever a wise person has a catalepsis, grasps some feature of how the world is, then she assents to it and thereby gains a piece of knowledge. And why is that? Because she has a kind of total mental state, which we can describe as virtue, as knowledge, as wisdom. All these three are, in a way, labels for the same mental state. So, as a knowledgeable person, as a person who is virtuous as a person who is wise. She assents to every impression of hers in the right kind of way. That means she assents to all cataleptic impressions with some modifications. That is a kind of complicated topic to which we turn later in the semester. But in general, she assents to cataleptic impressions. She does not assent to non cataleptic impressions. And by having assented, only to cataleptic impressions. She has gradually gathered a kind of system of true views about the world. And they all kind of hang together in the right sort of way because she has never assented to something that is non-cognitive and that could somehow disrupt her kind of overall outlook on the world. So she has this stable system of views, all of which are reliably true because they are cataleptic. And in total, that system of cataleptic impressions and sense to them provides her with systematic knowledge. However, the rest of us, all of us, as far as we know, fail to have knowledge in that sense. We are not wise, we are not virtuous. And hence, we are stuck with having mere opinions. Every time one of us has a catalepsis, grasp something about how the world is. Nevertheless, it is merely an opinion. And why is that? Because not being wise, not being knowledgeable, not being virtuous, we are prone to changing our minds. And we have accepted a lot of things to be true, which in fact are not true. So the kind of totality of things that we hold to be true is a kind of messy set of views. And they may be in tension with each other. They may call each other in question and they make us kind of waver with respect to whether we hold on to something that, in fact, has the status of catalepsis. So even when we grasp something about how the world is, it is not stable. And I want to leave you with the question of whether this idea that one's total state of mind shapes every single epistemic act, whether that is plausible 
or whether that simply seems too extreme. 